Salam Jio watching the international daily roundup. People's dispatch a selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. New York City to raise 150 homeless encampments. Saudi led coalition declares a ceasefire in Yemen. The crisis continues in Australia's aged care sector. And unintended pregnancies pose human rights crisis. Officials in New York City in the United States have started clearing about 150 homeless encampments. Mayor Eric Adams has announced that makeshift shelters will be dismantled within two weeks. An encampment in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn was destroyed on the 28th of March. The process involves the police and the departments of sanitation, social services and parks. Residents are given 24 hours notice to remove their belongings or have them destroyed. Adams told the New York Times that people would be placed in, quote, healthy living conditions, end quote. However, the details remain unclear. Official records show that nearly 50,000 people are part of the city's homeless shelter system. However, many do not go to shelters due to restrictive rules and a lack of privacy as well as safety. Officials have said that there are around 1,100 people staying in parks and streets, a figure which is likely to be a major undercount. The sweeps are taking place weeks after the city took similar actions against people sheltering in the subway system. According to the Urban Justice Center, close to 10,000 anti-homeless sweeps took place between 2016 and 2021. Speaking to The Gothamist, the Coalition for the Homeless argues that sweeps and policing are counterproductive and harmful strategies. These can, in fact, push unhoused people further away from services, including mental health support. The organization added that the clearing of encampments is a violation of Center for Disease Control guidelines. These state that people in encampments should not be removed unless they can be transferred to private rooms. The US-backed Saudi Arabia-led coalition has declared a ceasefire in the years-long war in Yemen. A spokesperson stated on the 29th of March that all military operations would be halted starting 6 a.m. on the 30th. The decision was based on a request by the Secretariat of the Gulf Cooperation Council or the GCC. It stated that this was with the view of creating conditions for peace, security and stability in Yemen. The coalition's declaration followed the announcement of a three-day ceasefire by the Houthis on the 26th. The group added that the ceasefire could be permanent if the coalition stopped its attacks on Yemeni territory. However, the Houthis have clarified that their offer has nothing to do with the so-called Riyadh consultations. The GCC has sponsored an intra-Yemeni consultation in the Saudi capital, which began on the 29th. The Houthis have refused to join the meeting, calling it, I quote, a gathering of ranks of the aggression coalition, end quote. The group has stated that it's always ready for a dialogue in a neutral country. It's also stated that Saudi Arabia must end its siege of Yemen, which has had catastrophic impact on the lives of the people. Hundreds of thousands have been killed and millions are facing hunger. Iran also welcomed the Houthis' plan as one presented in good faith. The ceasefire announced this week is the second such major declaration since the war began. A two-week halt was pre previously announced unilaterally by Saudi Arabia in April 2020. 97% of workers in Australia's aged care sector have still not received a bonus promised by the government. Those caring for the aged as well as disability care workers have been demanding proper assistance after the sector was hit hard by the Omicron-driven COVID surge. They've highlighted long-standing issues like understaffing, low wages and government neglect. Workers also criticised the delay in the provision of booster doses to the elderly and a lack of proper protective gear. In January, the Scott Morrison government declared that 265,000 workers would be paid $800. This was condemned as insufficient as the amount did little to address issues like staffing sh shortages. The United Workers' Union surveyed 1,000 workers to find out if the promised bonuses had actually been disbursed. Not only did most workers not receive it, over 75% said they had no information regarding the payment at all. Meanwhile, a new report has revealed that large amounts of government funds for aged care have been misappropriated. These profits have been siphoned off for the upkeep of mansions, offshore ventures and even redress schemes for church sexual abuse. In response to government apathy, aged care workers are gearing up for major industrial action later in this week. Formal applications for PROTECT action ballots will be filed with the Fair Work Commission. They will cover health providers in Queensland and South and Western Australia, which employ over 13,000 workers. The United Workers' Union has urged that the demands for better pay, better conditions and more time for care must be met. 
In our final story, the United Nations has found that nearly half of all pregnancies worldwide are unintended. These amount to over 120 million cases each year. These findings are part of the United Nations Population Fund's new report, Seeing the Unseen. It warns that this human rights crisis has profound consequences for people, societies and global health. Over 60% of unintended pregnancies end in abortion. However, an estimated 45% of all abortions globally are unsafe. These, of course, 5 to 13% of all maternal deaths. The report notes that conflicts and crises are expected to drive an increase in unintended pregnancies. This is because of an increase in sexual violence and lack of access to contraception. Data has suggested that over 20% of refugee women and girls will face sexual violence. In Afghanistan, the disruptions in health systems are expected to lead to almost 5 million unintended pregnancies by 2025. These projections have come at a time when the country is facing a severe economic and hunger crisis. An estimated 250 plus million people worldwide who want to avoid pregnancy are not using safe and modern methods of contraception. In cases where data is available, nearly a quarter of women are not able to refuse sex. Access to critical sexual and reproductive care has also been significantly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. 40% of African countries surveyed by the WHO reported disruptions, major disruptions, in 2021. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on such stories and the rest of the work that we do, uh, head on over to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.